with the world seemingly going crazy around us, it can seem like it's very, very hard to keep the faith in Jesus Christ. And yet, we have something that we can hold on to amidst these really, really hard times. And we're going to talk about that as we dive in and continue our study in 2 Peter. Hi, I'm Pastor Jeremy Bannister of Heights Christian Church, and we are going through the Bible in five years period of time. If it's always been a goal of yours to go through the Word of God, we invite you on this journey with us by subscribing to our channel, clicking the bell for notifications, and um, so that you can receive a devotional much like this one. We'll read just a little bit of the scripture and pull one thing from it to help us be more like Jesus. Well, as we dive into our continued study in 2 Peter, uh, Peter takes a kind of a detour in talking about what is going to happen to the future church, some of which I think we can confidently say we see happening today. And we want to point to not just what might happen uh, concerning the culture around us, but the hope we have beyond the cultural uh, phenomenon that we're experiencing right now. So let's take a look at it together. But there were also false prophets among the people, just as there will be false teachers among you. They will secretly introduce destructive heresies, even denying the sovereign Lord who bought them, bringing swift destruction on themselves. Many will follow their depraved conduct and will bring the way of truth into disrepute. In their greed, these teachers will exploit you with fabricated stories. Their condemnation has long been hanging over them, and their destruction has not been sleeping. For if God did not spare angels when they sinned, but sent them to hell, putting them in chains of darkness to be held for judgment, if he did not spare the ancient world when he brought the flood on its ungodly people, but protected Noah, a preacher of righteousness, and seven others, if he condemned the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah by burning them to ashes and made them an example of what's going to happen to the ungodly, and if he rescued Lot, a righteous man who was distressed by the depraved conduct of lawless. For that righteous man, living among them day after day, was tormented in his righteous soul by the lawless deeds he saw and heard. If this is so, then the Lord knows how to rescue the godly from trials and to hold the unrighteous for punishment on the day of judgment. This is especially true of those who follow the corrupt desire of the flesh and despise authority. Bold and arrogant, they're not afraid to heap abuse on celestial beings. Yet even angels, though they are stronger and more powerful, do not heap abuse on such beings when bringing judgment on, from, on, on them from the Lord. But these people blaspheme in matters they do not understand. They are like unreasoning animals, creatures of instinct, born only to be caught and destroyed. And like animals, they too will perish." They would be paid back with harm for the harm that they have done. Their idea of pleasure is to carouse in broad daylight. They are blots and blemishes, reveling in their pleasures while they feast with you. With eyes full of adultery, they never stop sinning. They seduce the unstable and are experts in greed and a cursed brood. They have left the straight way and wandered off to follow the way of Balaam, son of Bezor, who loved the wages of wickedness. But he was rebuked for, for his wrongdoing by a donkey, an animal without speech, who spoke with a human voice and restrained the prophet's madness. These people are springs without water and mist driven by a storm. Blackest darkness is reserved for them, for they mouth empty, boastful words, and by appealing to the lustful desires of the flesh, they entice people who are just escaping from those who live in error. They promise freedom while they themselves are slaves of depravity, for the people are slaves to whatever has mastered them. If they escape the corruption of the world by knowing our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and are again entangled in it and are overcome, they're worse off at the end than they were at the beginning. It would have been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than to have known it and then turn their backs on the sacred command that was passed on to them. Of them the Proverbs are true. A dog returns to its vomit, and a sow that is washed returns to her wallowing in the mud. So we look at this very bleak 
picture, if you will, of the future of what's going to happen with all these false teachers that are going to come and seduce people. And there are many, many instances that it's compared with. We we talk about the days of Noah. We talk about Sodom and Gomorrah. We talk about Balaam. We talk about people and uh, events that have happened, sinful things that have happened that show the destruction of these people who are bringing in these false teachings. And yet in the middle of all of this, there's hope. There's hope for you and for me as believers in Christ. And I kind of want to highlight that hope because this, this whole thing can feel kind of oppressive because that's the culture you find yourself in, right? We find ourselves in a culture that seems totally against God. We read this passage of scripture and we see so much that seems to line up with where our culture is right now, but there's hope in the midst of that. And I just want to highlight that just a moment as we go back to to, uh, verses 4 through 9. And it says, For if God did not spare angels when they sinned, but sent them to hell, putting them in chains of darkness to be held for judgment, if he did not spare the ancient world when he brought the flood on its ungodly people, but protected Noah, a preacher of righteousness, and seven others, if he condemned the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah by burning them to ashes and made them an example of what's going to happen to the ungodly, and if he rescued Lot, a righteous man who was distressed by the depraved conduct of the lawless. For that righteous man living among them day after day was tormented in his righteous soul by the lawless deeds he saw and heard. If this is so, then the Lord knows how to rescue the godly from trials and to hold the unrighteous for punishment on the day of judgment. You know, one of the things we need to hold on to as believers in Christ is that God is still in control. Even when things look so bad and false teachers have come and the culture seems to have gone so far away from the things of God, guess what? He's still in control. And better yet, the promise for you and me is this, that he can rescue the godly from a godless culture. That doesn't mean he's going to take us out of that godless culture, but that At the time of judgment, if you and I are remaining faithful, we're not going to be judged like the rest of the world is. So he knows how to preserve the godly and protect the godly while reserving the ungodly for punishment. And it should be a great hope for you and me to stay faithful even when the world around us seems to be going in a different direction. When we feel that peer pressure happening someplace else, we need to remember whose voice ultimately we need to listen to because we know that his is the one that's in ultimate control. So I pray that that's an encouragement for you today to stay faithful because I know our culture is really going crazy right now, right? We're, we're experiencing Second Peter 2, very much so in the world around us. And yet our hope in the middle of all that is God knows. God knows how to rescue the, God, uh, the godly from trials. So whatever you're going through, know that God, even in the midst of this situation, can rescue you from that trial. And, and is there for you and protecting you in Christ Jesus. May that be an encouragement for you today as you walk in this world and, and live as a testimony for him. God bless you and we'll talk with you again tomorrow.